Well, it's one thing expecting to stay. Um, and, and, I, and I see what Marcel van der Kroen's saying. I, I do get the, the gist or the feeling that he, he'll survive this international break. I don't think he should. No. I think we've seen all the evidence we need to see. We're going backwards. It's our worst Premier League start since 1989. The second worst start after that was last year with Eric Ten Hag. He's outdone his own record. Brian and Bremo has more goals than Manchester United. We're 14th in the league. We're closer to relegation than we are the top four. Um, so for me, there's there's nothing left to, to, to wait and see. But Marcel van der Kran seems to think um, and seems to say that, you know, he'll probably last past this international break. I mean, the lowest Manchester United should ever be is after zero games played in alphabetical order. And I think they're currently lower than that now. That shouldn't be happening to Manchester United. It's the worst thing I think, and this is, was my biggest takeaway from the, the game on, on Sunday, if I'm to look at it from a Manchester United perspective, is you're watching a team be set up and go out not to benefit the football club. You're watching a team that's going out and set up to protect the manager, protect his reputation, his job's on the line. He sends out a team to almost do the, the bare minimum to get some form of result. And in, in his in his defence, he did do that. They got they got kept a clean sheet. Very, could have won 1-0, could have won that game. That game could have gone either way. But there's a lot of managers that don't do that. There's a lot of managers that are under pressure that still put the club first. I think Eric Ten Hag at the moment, he's, put, he's putting himself before Manchester United and Manchester United as a club is severely suffering as a result of that. You should not ever be 14th. Two games, one in the league and we're in October. That isn't good enough in any world. It's worse than last season, which was atrocious from a Manchester United point of view and for their standards over the years. This uh, When's enough enough, really? Like that. Yeah, I mean, when I look at it, and as a Man United fan, it hurts, but when you when you, when you you open your eyes up to it, and look, listen, I, I know we have a laugh and a joke, and a lot of people have said to me, oh, listen, you thought this before, and now you think this. Yeah, I do, because with new, new evidence, I, I've changed my mind. But also, I look at us for what we are, and pound for pound... We're the worst team in the league, pound for pound, and and, yeah. and and that's with money spent, that's with the expectation, that's with the time invested into the manager, and that's with a couple of trophies that we've won. That we, that we, you know, <laughs> thank you, Eric. It's good that we won them, but you take that all into consideration. Yes, yeah, Southampton just come up from the Championship. They're meant to be there or thereabouts, fighting to stay in the league. Same with Leicester, etc. Um, you know, same with Ipswich. Those teams, fine, but. I'm seeing Fulham, Brentford, Brighton, you know, Crystal Palace got a way that they want to do things. I haven't been the, the best, but you can see Glasgow with a few, you know, way stylistically see what he wants to do. And pound for pound with the money spent, Man United are the worst team in the league and we're the worst coached. Yeah. We're I'd, the worst, we're, but by a mile. I'd go along with the, the worst coach thing is, has been evident now for, for, for last season and, and the start of this, this season. Manchester United clearly don't have any form of identity the Manchester United have had six managers potentially maybe seven if you include some caretakers mm. uh, as well since Alex Ferguson left is it fair to say that really like how much more does Eric Ten Hag want in terms of the time he's been afforded the resources he's been given so many of those players are by design to come in and play for that manager it's obvious you, you can see it they can say it's a coincidence all they like at Manchester United but it quite clearly isn't. It's because of the manager. Out of everyone that's come in post Fergie, mm. you say he's almost had the the most the given to oh, him. Oh, absolutely. So you shouldn't be in this. One hundred percent. You shouldn't be in this position. No, absolutely not. And and also Ten Hag now has no more excuses. Dan, like there's no that there's nothing to hide behind. Last year the injury injury situation was really really bad. So you go right. That is a, that is a mitigating circumstance, but. You know, next season we won't have those injuries. We've cleared out at boardroom level, complete new structure in there. You've got new backroom staff that you know he himself said to Rio on a on a on a piece that you know I I called I I called um uh, Rude Van Isteroy because he was asked. How Do you think Rude sometimes though he's saying so because he wants to be it to be perceived that he's got some form well, of control and power? Because no, I don't actually think not, he does. No, no, he does, mate. Honestly, he's made these decisions. Okay. He, and look at the signings. You know, did it, you know. <laughs> no, no the signings, wise, but stuff like that. Nistelrooy one feels very much like a club appointment to me. Club I'd, legend well, coming in. Yeah, but uh, again, I, I, I know yeah, face value. I get, I get that. He might. He's a little bit 
trying to preserve himself. He said to make him sound like he's got a bit more control. But you know, Rennie Harker, he knows him from Go Ahead Eagle. They, they know yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, that, these these are one. guys he knows. These are Dutch guys. Like he knows. He hasn't just rocked up and all of a sudden Rude Van Isra is magically there. No, he, he's he's had a hand in that. So he's had a hand in all of that. You've got him as players. You've 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 vetoed players going out like Aaron Wambasaka and Scott McTominay. Remember, we've sat here before at the beginning towards the beginning of the season, Dan saying it's it's an upgrade. In every yeah, position, I, I, yeah, I, I definitely said that. Yeah, so yeah. we said that, and now, so the only thing left is the manager. Doesn't matter what team we play, whether it's home or away. What t- we, we get absolutely rinsed, mate. That first season under Ten Hag, I can look back at that and think he did well there. Yeah, that was a that was a good season for Manchester United, considering where he where he picked them up to to finish third in the first season and win a trophy. There was evidential pro- progress there. Zero progress last year, gone completely backwards. But what is it that you, do you think has has changed from that first season where there was there was progress? Why has it gone so wrong since that kind of upward trajectory in that first season? Because we've just been exposed. We haven't played. We haven't. We haven't played well since. But why was in it different in the season. first season? Well, do you know what it was? in the first season? There wasn't a lot of. It wasn't great football. No, no. It wasn't great football. Efficient football. It, Exactly. Just get the job done and obviously getting a trophy at the first time of asking and then getting to another cup final. Okay, lost against City, but and finishing third. It was you can't really ask for much more than that in your first season. But the, and even towards the end of that first season, mate, we were limping towards the end. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't great. That first season, mate, we, we took some absolute hammerings. We lost seven nil to Liverpool in that first year. We lost four nil to Brentford. Like yeah. these this has been happening. So but you take the positives, rightly so, in year one. And this is what I'm saying. He's been afforded the patience. And that's a positive. Third Carabao Cup, FA Cup final. Second season, worst ever Premier League finish. Minus goal difference. Okay, the FA Cup is is fantastic. It will live in the memories. Football's about winning trophies. But at what cost? There is no progression in the league. Man United are regressing. We're breaking every single negative metric out there. He's breaking it. There's there's nothing left. Uh, The business, ironically, we said is good. But out of Manchester United's team... Who makes it into Aston Villa's eleven? I wouldn't want anyone. Wouldn't want one, would you? No. Although the ironic thing would be if some of these players were to join Villa. Unai Emery's coaching. 100%. He's he's in the maker of men, and he improves players. So they probably Im- improve. So a lot of players they would improve. The, the coaching is is severely lacking at Manchester United. Ten Hag can dress it up any way he wants. The eye test watching Manchester United on the pitch. There's no patterns of play whatsoever. There's no kind of obvious system. In fairness, on Sunday there was an obvious system but preservation. I mean, if you go to if exactly if you go to negative, we've drawn. You know, football that's not on the front foot. Again, self-preservation, just trying to survive the chop. Then that's what you see. Four, four, two, sit off. That's not his philosophy. That's not his philosophy. It's not how he wants to play. He bangs on about philosophy. And when he first came, he said, "I can't play the way I want to play. I don't have the don't have the players." I mean, how many players has he bought? Surely they, surely they should be able to play that way by now with the amount of money spent and the amount of players they've bought. We're fed up of the excuses. Uh, I speak for me. I'm fed up of the excuses. Anthony came on the weekend. I forgot he existed. And he's coming on ahead of Ahmad. He's been on. He's been isolated for ages. He spent all summer chasing Ugarte, which looked more like an Ineos sign than anything else. He comes in for a couple of games. Okay, the team didn't do well. He didn't do amazing, but he wasn't the worst. Haven't seen him in two games straight. What's didn't, happening? Didn't Christian even get Eriksen, on the pitch. The revival of Christian Eriksen. Like honestly, l- last year, it looked like he was in summer. He'll be out for, for a couple of million. He's playing more games than anything. Casemiro hooked against Liverpool, you know, and and, and everyone saying it's his fault. He's back in. He's playing. How, how, what's going on? No, it's Do you not know what I mean good. Martinez and Delic not in? Lindelof, Maguire, Evans, and Evans is getting man of the match. I mean, it was comical enough having Maguire and Evans at centre half, but when I saw at half time Lindelof coming on at right back, I was like, what? Is, what has happened and to this still football? Can score I mean, that yeah, <laughs> forget that. So, but the thing is, we can we can laugh about the game, but generally, I know where my club is going and, and where they are, Correct. and I'm happy with that. You don't know where your club is going, and you don't know what they are at the moment. And I'm not happy, <laughs> and you're not happy. Which should, that shouldn't be the case for Manchester United. I mean, they've no. they've given me nightmares. Going to feather still give my team nightmares now because we can't beat them. But you know, thinking of of where Manchester United were, I could have never foreseen them ever Ineos, being this bad. Ineos need to make the decision. They should now. have. Why didn't they do it in the summer flex? I, I, and, I, and, I, and listen, maybe it's a bit hypocritical of me to say you're right they should have because I wasn't behind it then but in, in hindsight yes they should have but the fact that we're here and now though the fact that you know Marcel van der Kran saying listen you know it probably stay a little bit longer that they will see it as in, in a process and you know early this and early that no it's over mate it's finished what are we waiting for I'll tell you what we're waiting for we're waiting to what play Chelsea at home 
And they come and say, what are we doing? Waiting for the first game out in the national break against Brentford and Brentford scores after 26 seconds? <laughs> like he does pretty much every game. What are we waiting? Well, are, we waiting to, are we waiting to go to Fenerbahce towards the end of October against Jose Mourinho and Fred and Amrabat and get embarrassed? Mate, there's nothing to like about Ten Hag's Manchester United and there is nothing to get behind for Ten Hag's Manchester United. If if they don't pull the trigger soon, they're just going to waste another season. How many seasons have Manchester United wasted since Sir Alex Ferguson went? There's been the odd glimmer and the, you know, the odd season of, of hope. There was one in the Soul Show, I think, where you finished second. And second, I think that was yeah. a, but even just saying that, finish second, that's a, that's a good season. You're Manchester United. You're one of the biggest teams in, in world football, one of the biggest teams that there's, there's ever been. You're 14th in the Premier League and you have not sacked your manager. Yeah. That can't happen. And that's what I mean. The standards are on the floor and we're trying to be brought into this, you know, oh, pressing's a little bit better or we've missed we've missed no. the most XG. We've got highest XG of big chance. I couldn't give a You can pull mate. a positive but, stat from somewhere. Honestly, I couldn't anything. care less, mate. We're closer to the relegation zone than we are anywhere else. That's all I care about. Manchester United, like said, Man United are fourteenth. I don't care about any of these metrics, and and you know it's unbeaten in this and that and the other. Spurs came and absolutely destroyed us. Liverpool came there and absolutely destroyed us. We lost against Brighton. Villa let us off the hook. Let's just be honest. Porto should we should have lost that. What and, was I, that mate, and, I, and I was speaking to Porto fans before that game. They said, "Flex, listen, we're not good. You know, uh, Conte has gone. You know, uh, the manager's gone. The manager's son's gone. You know, we're, we're a lot we're a lot different now. We're not the same team." And they found themselves 3-2 up from 2-0 down, mate, in the dying minutes of the game. So they don't fool me. They don't fool me. And Ineos need to just make that decision. And if they don't, they're just prolonging the inevitable. It's, it's going to happen at some it's point. It's going to yeah. happen. And I just think these next seven games, we've got like seven games in three weeks. And in that run, you've got West Ham away. We've got Chelsea at home, Brentford at home, Leicester a couple of times between the Premier League and the Carabao Cup. You know, Fenerbahce, uh, PAOK, I think, as well, like in the Cup Europa League games. They're probably looking at them seven and saying, hmm, this is the one where you've got to show something. And guess what? We'll be back in November in national break having this exact same conversation. I'm sick and tired of it. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.